How's it going everyone? I'm Mike Times W Supercard and we have a Diva PCC as you have seen on the screen. It is Charlotte versus Brie Bella. So what does that mean for me? That means that my whole plan for W Supercard has kind of gone to the toilet. Yeah, so if we look at exhibition now, uh, that ladder reward is just under 500 games away for that next male superstar. I can't wait until WrestleMania tier now. If we go back to legendary tier, they had the Diva PCC, which was then Charlotte versus Nikki Bella. And getting that Nikki has served me so well. I mean, I'm still using her now. So that's kind of how important that Diva was for myself. And I've got a feeling if I'm going to be moving straight into WrestleMania tier, whereas before when I was in legendary, once survivor tier was released i still wasn't close enough i didn't have enough legendary pros etc i was still then you know not even been able to win legendary king of the rings so it took me a while to get into starting and once i sorry started survivor tier and once i was in survivor tier then there was a lot of people who had already had pros you know diva pros etc and they were already like moving on so for me it's been playing catch up all the way and you know even now i'm st i'm still behind i haven't had as many King of the Rings to try and get those Diva pros and as many Boar pulls to get those pros and that. So I'm I'm still lagging behind. But once the new tier is released, I'll be in there straight away. So this time it's going to give an opportunity to push forward and keep up with the pace. So as a result, I'm going to have to get rid of that WrestleMania card, that ladder reward. And I'm going to have to push to try and get this Diva. Because with the amount of use I've got from that Nikki Bella... I can only imagine that having a Survivor Event Diva is going to help me massively, especially in those um, King of the Rings at the start of WrestleMania tier when nobody's got any WrestleMania Diva pros. Everyone will be relying on Survivors. To have that card in for the solo is going to be massive against those people who didn't get her or who are unable to get her. So with that said, let's come down and have a look. I'm currently around 25. Okay, it's not going too well, is it? Yeah, 20,000 with 260, 70 points, something like that. I did go for Bree. The only reason I went for Bree is because she is compatible with the majority. I've got more right and left arrows rather than up and down arrows. So Charlotte is just going to be incompatible. At least she would be compatible, for example, with my event uh, Nikki Bella card. So I don't know how many points we're going to need yet for this card. I am going to envisage somewhere around 10,000 points to get the card. If we click on rewards, that might be a little bit, a little bit, it might be less. You know, you could come down to about 8,500. I'm going to say you want to get 10,000 points if you want to, like, have a chance of getting that card. Now, the undercards are weighted for the top tiers towards Brock Lesnar, Miles Better than Roman's Re Roman Reigns. Um, as we scroll down, uh, okay, we won't worry about the supports too much. Uh, Booker T Miz, not really a lot of difference there. And if we scroll down again towards the epics, you've then got Bailey and Nikki. So, depending what people are going for, if we look out, if we forget the epics to an extent, and we look for legendary and obviously survivor, well, the Brock Lesnar is going to be a big, a big lull, a big pull to a lot of people, and. Booker Tina Miz, I honestly don't know. But but I do know if you go to the top here and compare let me just scroll right to the top one and compare the two should we say cards that everyone's going for. Brie Bella, Charlotte, what's the difference? Well, statistically they have the exact same stat points. Now I'm not gonna double compare it now because I believe I did look at this earlier. In fact, I will. 781, 781, and I saw 812, 812. Okay, so 806, so that's 5 up, 191. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, they're, they're the same the same point statistically. The difference is where they're obviously distributed. Now, you've got Charlotte being the power toughness card with Brie being the speed and charisma. Now, another reason why Brie Bella would work well is because, obviously, Nikki Bella is power and toughness. So, you've got that good compatibility there. So Brie Bella for me is the one I'm going to go for. Uh, she's going to win. Charlotte can't pull this back now, even though it's early on. 
in the event. There's not going to be enough people going for the Brock Lesnar and the undercards to, to win that back. Brie Bella's going to be the choice pretty much of all the, I imagine, the higher tier players which are going for the actual Survivor card. So I've got a feeling she's going to definitely get that. Now, with that said, I'm not going to do any real gameplay at the moment. Oops, I will come back to that and I'll show you the kind of team I'm using. Now, some people say, well, why do you show your team? Why do you do this and do that? Because you're just helping other people to potentially get your reward. And yes, that is true. That does make sense. But I feel that I will still put enough effort in if I wanted to get the card to get it regardless and if I can help some other people along the way, not everyone is always going to be going for the event cards, the top cards. It might help some of you that just want to try and make sure you get, for example, that Roman Reigns or that Miz card or whatever you're going for. It might help you to get those rewards. So the few people who will use the tactics to you know, potentially rival me for some of the best cards are going to be outnumbered by those of you who maybe can use them to help you get the rewards that I no longer, I no longer need. Where for obviously a long time, I was you know vying for those kind of rewards and if i had known some of these tips and tactics it would have helped me a great deal so that's the reason why i share it my last king of the ring i didn't do on camera uh, the reward wasn't particularly particular uh, particularly great i've got neville okay is a pro so i'm working on kevin owens now and and neville which you will see in a moment that would be a pro owens a pro neville so if you're two more pros to go into my road to glory and that should also help me make that almost to a stage where I can do well I can pretty much do the whole event now in plus fives or plus threes um, at the very end if I just want to make sure I win I can do it uh, you know you drop down to plus ones but plus threes pretty much can win if I get a couple more pros in there now that I've got Daniel Bryan obviously fully done as well that should be that should be me sorted for road to road to glory, and we've got a king of the ring now, as you can see, which is coming up towards the end. Uh, standing wise, came joint second. Uh, WWE Master here has won everything, but it's not as as bad as it looks because he does have the divas, but I think he's got a male tag, which is week so all I'm going to try and do is get to the finals there uh, aim is to finish second and third because that should be the easier route should get a bot first of all and then probably be playing one of those humans most likely who is it um, uh, most likely Blade or Z-Man Boda all these people I have beat so as long as long as there's no real surprises and I do grinding for a few hours I'll be energising in between then we should hopefully get to the final and that will mean there'll be a reward to come in the early hours of the morning which I might do on cam if I'm still awake and if not then I will just claim the reward and when I've been in an update I'll show you guys but I'm just going to try and bang out those king of the rings now but I'm going to start them at favourable times so because I've been finding when I'm, at, when I'm joining king of the rings in like the morning or afternoon UK time they're just people everywhere you know there's players upon players and i don't really focus that much on the qualifying as you know some of you may be aware i kind of just try and get myself through to the to the quarter uh, to the quarters or the yeah it's the quarters and this isn't it yeah to the quarterfinals and i wait for the last kind of 15 games to make my move in the positions so have lots of people vying all the time i lose too many games so try and avoid that let's come in and play a few games oop and see how we are running things okay this is a team i decided to use tactic once again i've explained it before you've probably heard it from a lot of other guys in case you are new to my channel or to the game the idea is you want to pick a tier where you just creep into the tier like i have done here in survivor tier but and the but part is you have a couple of cards which are good for that tier. Now, for me, I have this Nikki Bella survive, uh, legendary even event pro, which makes her stronger than any regular legendary card. And I pair her up with an epic pro Naomi. So I've got the compatible tag. And between the two of them, if you take, for example, legendary event epic normal, they're kind of into a legendary card. Okay, so it kind of balances out. 
I've got an under level cane as you will see here not fully leveled up he's been purposely and I will just click on improve to show you purposely I have put his tat his, his um, tokens in the various points to try and level him out obviously I'm not gonna level him up to 25 yet so I can only use three tokens but I put a bit in charisma a bit in toughness one well, you know and I kind of made it all so he's fairly balanced and the reason why I've done that is because he needs to be good enough to beat any legendary card, which he can do, because legendary cards, when proccing, will never normally go above 1750, as if people have pretty much loaded that stat. You can get 1800 with cards like uh, Brock Lesnar and that in power if you put all the tokens in there. But pretty much, as long as you've got about 1750, 1800, you will win. And then if you take a legendary event card, like the Alberto de Rio, for example, or the old Undertakers, etc., their base stats, one, if they've got the stats of 216, 1700, maybe the odd one in 1800. So when they proc, they'll go up to 2000s, you know, maybe 2100, like kind of will be the top end of it. So my cane is designed to be all those cards, and that's where I've left him at. I don't want him to be too strong, because if I make him a fully leveled out survivor pro, the game will recognize him as that, and as a result, my opponents will be stronger by keeping him weaker, strong enough to beat legendary cards and legendary event cards, but not so strong that he's a full survivor pro, I get a more favourable, should we say, lineup of opponents in the plus fives in general. Not always, but in general. To complete that, I've given him a compatible tag in John Cena, one of the best cards in the tier. This one's my more balanced out one. And then I've got two cards here in the form of Kevin Owens, which I'm levelling up. And never, which I'm leveling up. As you can see, I've fully maxed out Kevin Owens, and then I just put enough into Neville at the moment to keep me in Survivor tier. So that's what we're going for. Let's put it into action and show you a few games. Now, I've got titles on. I think if you're going to want to get this Nikki Bella card, you're going to probably have to use titles because there's going to be a lot of people playing for this. Now, I'm playing obviously on my desktop at the moment, and I will do for a few hours tonight. I'll play all the games through them but then once i kind of done watching things on the desktop watching you know the basketball and stuff like that i'll go back to my phone it's a lot quicker and it will help you if you want to grind if you if you can do that you want to sit on your phone really and watch a tv or something and play it on your phone it'll be quicker than using uh, an emulator like i am but this is just for the benefit of playing more games than once and obviously recording for you guys so tactics two things a generally the computer uses this better card straight away and B, you need to only win, you're trying to only win two of the three matches so you don't get a clean sweep. Because if you get a clean sweep, you have to take three ball pools. And ball pools are bad in this because they mean that you spend more time picking cards and filling up your card catalogue. And then having to remove all your card catalogue than you do playing games and winning points. So, here, what I would normally do is you can either go for the win straight away hoping to take the first game or you throw away and I'm gonna go for the win now it depends I mix it up because sometimes sometimes I like to just throw away the first match um, I'm always hoping it's a diva match diva match is great for me because that should generally be a win uh, obviously on this occasion it hasn't happened because uh, it was in the bad bad stats and obviously um, Bailey's propped and beaten my Nicky but having the John Cena back as well, being one of the better cards in the tier, it still gives you the opportunity to come back in the game if you if you do lose a match. Like if I'd have got a tag there, I would have lost. Quite lucky the way the game the games ran out. But that's why sometimes I keep um, I will use the weaker card first. If I had done, I would have lost that match because Nikki Bella would have lost. So I, I don't know. I can't say that it's good to throw away in the first match or if it's good to win the first match it kind of depends if you recognize names and people and the kind of cards they have like here uh, I will use Nikki Bella straight away to go one nil up it would then mean that if I get a male match I will throw away because excuse me <coughs> excuse me uh, while I could probably win this match up for sure in fact you know what ignore me my two, my two choices here, I can either train these two cards, which is what I'm kind of in the process of doing, training the cards as well as using them to keep my deck at the very bottom of Survivor tier, 
or I could go for the guaranteed win here with the compatible tag, use the boost, and then try and throw away in the last match. Now, if the last match is a diva match and I throw away now, then I might lose the game. So I'm going to go for what would be should be a guaranteed win because of the compatibility in the tag, because of the cane card, and obviously because of the plus 75 with the boost. Then in the last match, as it's worked out here for me, I can still get the trade. In fact, it's worked out better because these are two stats to train up these cards. So I used to think that it was good to try and throw away early on and then win the last two matches, which which it you probably you probably win easier that way when the games go in your favour. However, if the game throws a curveball, for example, and it's a you throw a single mail and you throw away there and then it gives you the two diva matches with like an epic pro here you are you're very susceptible to losing so what i would do here whenever a tag team starts this is when i do throw away okay i always throw in a tag team because if i use my compatible tag now and a two mail matches are called i've definitely lost if i use it and one mail match is called I've lost, uh, you know, I've lost as well because these are these guys are never, ever, 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 ever going to be any other cars that I'm coming up against, pretty much. So I throw away here. This is this is the ideal scenario. First game, tag team, throw away those two cards. Okay, then you get either the solo male or the solo diva. Perfect, you know, good stats there for Nikki Bella. If it was speed, maybe I'd have used a boost. Great diva toughness speed. Okay, not good here. Didn't really want the diva. Didn't know I was going to get two diva matches because I could have led with these two guys. However, we've got the toughness boost. And there we go. Great. We've only got a legendary single Bailey. Perfect win. So if I could get a tag match first off every time, I would pick that. Tag match, throw out those two weaker cards, the two cards I'm training. Leave basically all my best cards to the end. And they should generally be good enough to beat the opponent. If I'm lucky to get two diva matches like I did then, it's not... It's not um, game over, as you saw. You know, you've still got a chance because you're hoping that you can guarantee the first Diva win with that event card or that very strong card that you're using. And obviously, then the second card is kind of potluck. You're just hoping they don't have a a pro in the tier above the card you're using. So when it comes out with Diva and Speed here, use the boost. I'm going to have to use Nikki. I always have to use Nikki because. I don't want to take the risk that I use my Naomi, lose, and then get stuck with a tag and a and let's say a single and then a tag or something like that and get caught out. So I tend to try and get that first game under the belt. Now, if I lose this one, it doesn't matter because I've just used my biggest card or my best card I got left and pray that I don't come up against the Survivor Pro because you will find. Even with this tactic, sometimes you'll come up against somebody with a fully leveled Survivor Pro. Now, normally, it won't be a top Survivor Pro. It'll be cards like a Sheamus or a, a Sheamus Stardust, Ryback cards like that. But they would obviously can still beat you if um, because they're going to be fully leveled. Where you're doing 2100 or so, as you saw with my cane, they'll be doing 23, 24 in the, in the stats. So... When that happens, you kind of, I'll just play Hulk Maniac for the sake of it, you kind of have to just, you know, swallow it, take it, and be like, great, perfect, take the loss, and move on. Or play it just as the last game here, Charisma, two choices, do I throw away, do I go over and think, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm going to say that there's not going to be many, and do the other tactic, I'm going to throw away first of all, and hope that it's not all male matches, there won't be too many times you get all male matches, so I'm going to take that risk of throwing away, now I've got the risk of, obviously, um, I'm going to use this card here. If it comes a, a male tag, I mean, oh, here we go. So I lose, okay? I lose here because of, there you go, there's that Seamus Pro. I lose here because of me throwing away in the first game. So this is why I generally don't throw away in the first match unless it happens to be the tag. Tag, throw away, otherwise take the first match and then play it by ear, leave yourself with the best opportunity possible to win the third match. Okay, I'll be my time in here. I'm gonna go back to grinding this game. Short video now. I'll be back with you guys later on to show you my progress. Good luck.